Hello Grant, I saw another movie without you, this time with Daniel. He didn't just go by himself this time. We're going to talk about 12 Years a Slave. So 12 Years a Slave, getting all this Oscar buzz, it's been talking about how great, thank you, <laughs> how great of a movie it's supposed to be. That's right. Let me tell you, or like, how about you tell me about your, I guess, general feelings about it. Yeah, well, I mean, going into it, it's one of those, it's, like, it's this film about slavery that is a brutal film. And you kind of go, am I, should I look forward to this? Mm -hmm. um, but it, you did look forward to seeing a very well done film yeah. uh, that has all this buzz around it. And I thought that some of the buzz was definitely worth it. Um, and there were some um, bits I didn't like so much. And even when you're trying to critique a film like this, because it's such a delicate and sensitive subject matter, it's like, should I really critique this? Uh, but there's a line towards the beginning of the film where Solomon, who gets kidnapped, um, kind of is in shock. He says, the guys who kidnapped me were artists. But artists deserve critique too, and I think that applies to this film as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it, it's a hard film to kind of talk about in some ways because it's, it is a very serious movie, it's dealing with slavery. To give you a kind of a brief background of the movie, there is this character named Solomon who is a free slave up in the north who gets kidnapped right at the very beginning part and then sold into slavery for 12 years, hence the title. And for the most part, I mean, there, there's really, there's some things that I really enjoyed about this film. And, you know, again, it, it, it's hard to talk about because I wonder what my opinion would have been like had it not been for all the Oscar buzz that's getting here right now. No. I, I can never see this movie through uh, without that prism first. But because I had that, I was expecting, I guess, something super, super great. And when I got, didn't, I suppose, meet my expectations. There is a lot to like. I really enjoyed, and I'm going to butcher his name, I'm going to say that right now. Chuita Legiafor, I think is how you're supposed to say his name or pronounce his name. The guy He's, who plays Solomon. I'm just the guy who plays that. Solomon. <laughs> he does do a fantastic job. I really, really liked him. And there's a few other actors, specifically Benedict Cumberbatch and Michael Fassbender, both do really great jobs portraying the characters that they're given. The cinematography is done really well. The score is very unique and very different from what you expect from this type of film. But at the end of the day, even though as great as the main character is, I feel that some of the supporting characters ring a bit false for, for two different reasons. While this is based on a true story, I have to wonder how true this story actually is. After doing some research, after seeing the film, there is no verification of how realist or how sorry how true this story is. I'm sure it actually has happened in the past. There's probably precedence for this story, but it felt very fake a lot of the times about what was going on. Specifically because the main character does a lot of things that I feel like the slaves just would not be able to get away with. And I never felt as invested. And the director, Steve McQueen, not the 60s action star, but the director Steve McQueen from Britain, I always feel like there's this like arm's distance from the subject matter he does in this movie, so I never feel like I'm in it or like supposed to be emotive as much as I could be because I always feel like it's just like this plastic veneer that's in front of me and, and, the, and the screen at all times. And lastly, I just want to point out, it's very Shakespearean in the, in the language and I realize that in the 1800s people spoke a bit differently than what we do now. And while the main character, Chuitl, does it great and I think some of the other people do it great, there's a few main supporting characters who I feel took me right out of the movie. Every time I started speaking, like, this feels so fake and so false, like a high school production of Hamlet. And just like, you are not speaking this the way it should be spoken, like a Kenneth Branagh or a Laurence Olivier. So it feels like I'm being really down on the movie, but I did actually <laughs> like portions of it. I did actually enjoy it for, for what it was, but those are some main criticisms that I think prevent it from being a great film. Mm. How about you? Well, and I would agree with, I think some of those um, supporting actors feel like characters, contrasted with such real emotion that's being played. Um, the guy who plays Solomon, I'll keep it like that, yeah. he, uh, I think he hits the highs as well as the lows. You know, he has yeah. those big dramatic moments, but what really sets him apart are his eyes and his yeah. facial expressions, so that you can just see everything being done there very subtly. Um, yeah, let's talk about some of the things that I enjoyed first before yeah. we dive into criticizing a little bit. Sure. I thought, again, the cinema photography was outstanding. There was um, some lighting that was really well done that added a lot to the story. There was one shot, there's a lot of visual imagery going on, there's right. one shot where one of um, Solomon's friends, who's a slave, um, he gets brutalized, basically, 
And there's this violin that Solomon has as a slave that he gets to play uh, throughout the movie. And he's winding the violin and tightening the, the strings until they crack and the violin basically is destroyed. And it was almost an imagery of his strings being wound until um, a beautiful instrument of human, I guess you could say, was destroyed uh, right. through this. I thought that was effective. And then the music, I mean, I, I forgot it was a Hans Zimmer composition. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's known for his bombastic big stuff. And this was very creative. Yeah, although Hans Zimmer did start in the electronic music industry. That's so true. it's interesting that he brings that in. He brings into the that story. back in. And yeah. it felt like it really did add to the story with that. And like we talked about already, the acting is terrific. Yeah. Um, there is some great acting in that. Uh, especially Fastbanders, who plays the evil bad guy. You, know, you think of him as this evil bad guy, but then as his role progresses, he actually, um, you see the, the delicate, um, the subtleties of his character, right. which is tricky to do in that kind of role. Yeah. I apologize about the train that just went by. Yeah, it's actually, we're filming this in uh, <laughs> colonial times. So yeah. Just to keep the it's pretty great. Yeah. So I guess at the end of the day, Daniel, what are you going to rate this movie? Out of five, what would you give it? I'd probably do it, I, uh, I guess because of its groundbreaking subject matter, right. it probably deserves a four out of five. <laughs> in terms of my enjoyment level, i give it a yeah. three and a half out of five on there. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to give this a three and a half out of five as well. I, there's a lot of stuff to enjoy about it. It's something I would actually recommend people go and watch. Yeah. But I don't feel it raises to the level of like great movie or even the best movie of this year. Although I have a feeling it's going to be winning Best Picture, Best Director, and probably Best Actor and I think at part the of Oscars this year. The reason for that is it's a movie about American slavery mm -hmm. by a black director outside of America sure. and by black cast. Um, and I think that's pretty part of it. It's very historical, it feels, because sure. of that. But Steve McQueen, the director, he has done movies before, um, Shame and Hunger, that deal with extremities of human suffering, I guess, whether sexual or physical. Right. And I feel like he's more fascinated by that aspect than the actual story and the circumstances. Yeah. Uh, and he's just I agree. intent on watching that. It's, it's almost like we need to see, he's, he's more interested in the violence than the actual humanity of the violence. Or how the humanity yeah. interacts with the violence. Yeah. We had, we had this long conversation and we've already been filming for seven minutes, so not too much longer, folks. <laughs> but the... The more interesting part is the uh, Benedict Cumberbatch character and how yeah. we want kind of that interaction between him and Solomon to be focused on more. Because that was almost the most interesting part of the movie. Once we get outside of that, then it just devolves into something that's not as interesting or not as visually interesting. I would agree. And I'd end with saying that, that that character and his interaction trying to deal with slavery in the culture was what impacted, I guess, my conscience the most and made me question how do I impact with evils in my culture. Sure. So, that's 12 Years a Slave. We'll be back again at some point. Listen, there's gonna be some links down in the description below. We can do some, subscribe, see the trailer for this film, and a bunch of other goodies that are gonna be down there too. Subscribe to the podcast. All right, thanks Daniel. Thank you, Kyle.